Hello, in this video we are talking about polar aligning a star tracker such as the Skywatcher Star Adventure without even looking through the polar scope which is right here. Because sometimes there is a situation where the celestial pole is just simply not visible due to some obstacles on the ground like for instance a tall building or maybe a tree or something like this and in this situation the only thing you can really do is just coarsely polar align your tracker. So in this video I will explain how to coarsely polar align the star tracker to get the alignment to be as good as possible and also I will show you some images that I have recently taken with different focal lengths with my tracker aligned coarsely in order to show you what exactly is going on as we switch around different focal lengths. And then I will conclude for what kind of astrophotography is this even suitable for and what are my general recommendations with that approach. And also I have a very important and very useful pro tip when it comes to the use of the Compass app on your phone. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in general there are four things that factor into how successful your tracking is and by the successfulness of the tracking we are going to measure how much the stars resemble pinpoint points on your image and how much of the star trace do you actually have. So the less star trace you have the better tracking you pulled off and the more star trace you have in your image the worse the overall tracking was. And there are four things that influence how much of that you have on your image, how much of the star trace do you have visible in your images and how good the tracking is with regards to the star trace in your image. The first thing is of course the accuracy of the polar alignment. If you manage to get the main rotational axis of your tracker to be exactly pointed at this appropriate celestial pole which is north or south depending on, on which hemisphere you are currently located then the tracking will be spot on. But if those axes are not correctly aligned there is a slight misalignment between those axes but the shadow speed that you are using is relatively low then you will also not see star trace in your image or you will see it very little. So the shadow speed also influences that because of course the longer the shadow speed the more likely it is that the stars will eventually start to trail in your images. The third thing that influences this is the focal length of your lens. The wider the lens the less likely it is that you will see star trace in your images. So generally speaking for wider focal lengths like 15, 24, something like this millimeters you will see that in just a second as I will show you my sample images. For wider focal lengths you can get away with your polar alignment not being super Super precise. So what do you actually need to do in order to coarsely polar align your tracker? Well basically those are the exact steps that you need to take when you are doing the fine alignment anyway because in order to look for the polar scope and see the north or south celestial pole which in case of the north hemisphere would be Polaris inside the scope in order to even see this star inside the scope you need to first coarsely polar align the tracker because without it there will be just no way that you will be able to see the north celestial pole through the polar scope. So the knowledge on how to coarsely polar align the tracker is very much essential even if you are shooting in the field where you see every portion of the horizon all around you. So how do you do it? Here's my tracker which is the Skywatcher Star Adventure and in order to coarsely polar align it you need three things to do that. You need to make sure that the base of the tracker is level, you need to make sure that you are pointed at the correct azimuth and you need to make sure that you are tilted correctly, that the elevation angle is dialed in correctly with regards to your actual location. So usually the first thing to do after of course you mount the tracker, the base of the tracker on the tripod would be to level it. But actually the first thing that I would recommend to do is to make sure that you are roughly pointed at the correct azimuth because if your azimuth is way off even if you level the tracker you wouldn't be able to then fine tune and input the correct azimuth into the tracker because the way it works you have those precision screws right here and there is only so much play right here so you can rotate the tracker in order to fine tune the azimuth but you will not be able to make like a full rotation on half of the rotation once it is properly set on the ground once the, once the tripod is set on the ground firmly. So first actually take your phone, open the Compass app. This is the app that probably most of the phones have built in. I'm using iOS, this is the iPhone 10. Just open the Compass app and press the phone against the tracker like this so it aligns with this sort of line on the tracker. Put it like this and then if you rotate it around you're going to see that the reading on the compass will change. So if you're on the North Celestial Pole, make sure that you are pointed north. So in my case, it would be something here. 
And then if you're pointed north, just set the tracker on the ground, of course on the tripod, and then level it. And in order to level it, you need to look at this bubble level that is right here and adjust the length of the tripod legs in order to make sure that this bubble level is correctly showing you that you are leveled. And by the way, I have a full tutorial on how to set up the Skywatcher Star Adventure. I explain every knob, every little thing that you can do on the adventure, both the attachments of both the wide angle attachment and also the declination bracket with the dovetail for deep sky astrophotography. I'll explain all that, how to look for the polar scope, how to read what are you actually seeing on the polar scope, what should you see on the polar scope in order to get to the correct alignment. So make sure to check that video as well if you haven't already. I will link to that by the end of the video on the end screen, so make sure to stick around. And then once our tracker is roughly pointed at the correct azimuth, which is north for again for the north hemisphere and south for the southern hemisphere, and also the tracker is leveled with regards to the bubble level that we have right here on the base, we need to dial in our elevation. And this is quite easy and not really with some regard. So let me explain what I'm talking about. So right here on this wedge you have this scale and this is the scale that shows the degrees of elevation angle and this is something that should exactly resemble your current latitude. So you can just look at the coordinates of your current location actually in terms of the iOS app uh, on the iPhone you can actually see your current latitude right here uh, beside the compass. So you just take your latitude and you dial in this number right here so you can loosen that then you can use this screw in order to properly set it to your current latitude. But the problem is that the scale on this latitude control is actually not very precise. You have those lines. One line here on this scale depicts an advancement with three degrees. And this is not very fine tuned, you know, three degrees is quite a lot. For instance, you have the 45 and the 60 right here, and I am currently at the latitude of around 50 degrees north. So in order to dial in 50, I need to know that I need to go from 45 one line and then another line would get me to 51. So I need to be like two thirds of the way between the first and the second line after 45. So really I just need to eyeball that how much of this is two thirds of, of the gap between the 48 and the 51 and that way I need to dial in my elevation. So this is not very precise depending on what the current latitude of your location actually is. It will be more or less precise. For instance if you are exactly at 45 degrees latitude you can just dial in dead on this line of that depicts the 45 and you will be pretty much good to go but if you are somewhere in between like for instance I am on the two-thirds between one and the other line it won't be exactly precise but this is the way it is. So after you have your level and after you have your elevation let's actually go back to the azimuth because like I mentioned and I also explained this in full detail in this video that I mentioned you have those screws right here. Those are the two screws that you can use to precisely fine tune your azimuth. If you turn them in the same sort of direction towards you or away from you, which means that one is actually going clockwise and the other is going counterclockwise, you can rotate the tracker with regards to the base ever so slightly in order to fine tune your azimuth. And you can use that to your advantage in order to again press the phone against here and make sure that you are pointed north. So here's the caveat. If you would be using an analog compass, you know, an old school compass in order to properly align your tracker towards the north, you would be aligning it towards the magnetic north. And if you didn't know, there is actually quite a difference between the magnetic north pole and the true north pole. It is called the true north pole. And this is the place where all the meridians converge. It is somewhere on the Arctic Ocean, but actually the magnetic north pole is not in the exact same spot. The magnetic north pole has a little bit of that location. It is somewhere in Canada. So if you're using your compass, and actually if you're using a compass app in your phone by default you are also using the magnetometer that is inside your phone in order to point you at the magnetic north pole so somewhere in Canada but actually the tracker needs to be set to the true north pole geographical north pole which also is the celestial north pole and it corresponds to the axis with regards to which the earth is actually rotating and this is what is important for astrophotography and for the tracking but here's the pro tip that I have mentioned in the intro you can actually go to the settings inside your iPhone you can actually go to settings and right here somewhere down below you have the settings of compass and right here you have the switch use through north and I actually didn't know about this and the images that you were about to see are taken without using the true north here in the compass but still I got pretty good results so just bear that in mind that if you use true north your results might be even better and if you switch it on it will use the true north you will use gyroscope and the GPS location in order to point you at the correct 
true North Pole, the geographical North Pole and not the magnetic North Pole. And as a matter of fact, there are even specialized apps on the App Store that you can actually use in order to aid you with the polar alignment. And those apps can use all the data from the gyroscope in order to guide you both towards the correct azimuth and also towards the correct tilt because like I mentioned the tilt control on the tracker at least on the Skywatcher Star Adventure is not very precise. So one of the apps that I would recommend is called Polar Scope Line Pro. Let me open up real quick so I can just show you that. You open that, here is the app and right here you have the daylight polar alignment. You can click on that and right here you have the scale and if I move this I would need to move it somewhere here then down and as you can see this crosshairs and if you make it dead on center on this reticle that means that you are actually polar aligned towards the north celestial pole correctly so what you can do is you can just take the phone press it against the tracker again align it with this edge and that way use the azimuth control and use the tilt control in order to make sure that the crosshairs are matching the target on this app so that's something you can use this app is actually not free, it costs a few bucks. I will link uh, down below if you want to pick it up. But as a matter of fact, from my experience, the apps and the phone and the electronic compass in itself, it's not something that I can fully trust. A few times it happened that I was in the playing field where I could really see where Polaris was and I was checking out the compass and the compass was way off. It was like 10 degrees, 15, even maybe 20 degrees. And it was notoriously trying to point me at the spot uh, on the horizon, which was clearly not north. So honestly, I wouldn't trust those compasses in phones 100%. Maybe my phone is just faulty. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any experience with that. But what I recommend you to do is to actually get an analog compass, you know, the old school analog compass with the needle spinning around like the ones that Boy Scouts would use uh, when they are camping and navigating through forest. You can pick one up for like five bucks or something like this. I will actually leave some links down below to Amazon. I found a few of these compasses that would work great because what you want to do is make sure that a compass like this is enclosed in some kind of a rectangular box because what you want to do is you want to make sure that one side of the compass that is perpendicular, that is a straight line of the box of the compass that is perpendicular to the north and south line on the dial because you want to use that, that straight line, in order to press it against this side of the tracker. And that way you know that the compass with regards to the tracker is set up properly because if the compass is round, if the box is just round like the dial of the compass, that you will know how to position it with regards to the tracker. So just get one that is enclosed in a rectangular box. And then you can use the compass the analog compass in order to point you towards the north or south and you will be using the magnetic north in this situation there is no way to switch an analog compass like this to the true north but the magnetic north is actually pretty good in itself already but one thing that you need to keep in mind with both analog compasses and also electronic compasses and phones is that they may be thrown off by the electronics that are nearby so make sure that the tracker is actually off maybe you can even take the batteries out or something like this because if there is a circuit of current right beside a tracker like this every current is generating a magnetic field if you didn't know and that magnetic field might influence the reading of your compass so what you can also do is just if you are polar aligned the way that you think it's all right you can just take the compass and just move it away from the tracker and see if the reading on the compass would change if it does it probably is likely that the electronics in the tracker are throwing it off and this is basically all you can do if you cannot see through the polar scope this is all you can do in order to polar align and this is the course polar alignment which like i mentioned is something that you need to do anyway before you even start looking for the polar scope if you have such a possibility so right now let's take a look at some of those images that i have taken i have taken an image at 15 millimeters 24 millimeters 35 70 and 200 all of those images were taken with my coarsely polar aligned star tracker. I was pointed roughly at the same spot on the sky because I was not moving the camera, I was just switching around lenses. I was using a constant shutter speed of two minutes, which I think is a reasonable shutter speed to use on a tracker. You don't want to go too short because that kind of defeats the purpose of using the tracker in the first place. But also you don't want to go too long for like five minutes or something because really if the polar alignment is only coarse, you don't want to push it and I think two minutes is, is something reasonable to use on a tracker like this. So let's take a look at those images and let's see what kind of conclusions can we draw from that. So let's jump into Lightroom right now. Okay, so we are here in Lightroom and as you can see I have a couple of images right here. The first one is taken with 15mm focal length and as you can see if I zoom in here to one to one scale, 
the stars are pretty sharp, you know, with that kind of focal length, which is very wide, you know, it's definitely the ultra wide territory. You can totally coarsely polar align your tracker and this will be enough for that kind of shutter speed at 15 millimeters focal length. So if you switch it up to 24, right here, you already have the EXIF. So at 24, you can see that the stars are also pretty sharp. You know, there are no apparent star trace. And definitely if you look at it at this scale, you cannot definitely see that. And also if I switched up to 35, you can see that we are getting more and more magnified as I switch around the focal lens, which is of course what you would expect. And right now, if we zoom in, I would say that maybe I can see some star trace, but very, very slightly. I think this is totally usable. But right now, if we go to 70, then at 70 millimeters, if I zoom in, you can definitely see the star trace. You know, they are going some kind of diagonally like this, and you can totally see that. And even if you look at it at this kind of scale, I think you can definitely see some star trace. You know, like I mentioned, I was using the magnetic north pole. Maybe if you use the true north, you can actually get it to work even at 70 millimeters focal length. And now just to show you how badly it gets if you prolong and prolong the focal length, let me actually show you what happens at 200 focal length. And at 200, you can see that the star trace are massive. You know, I don't even need to zoom in to 101 you can clearly see that the star trace are massive. And just to show you a comparison, after I did this test, I polar aligned it properly because I was actually at the location where I could see the North Celeste Pole. I was just using the coarsely aligned trackers for, for the testing purposes and for educational purposes for this video. But after that, I wanted to polar align properly and show you what kind of a difference does this make to the successfulness of the tracker. So this image is taken with the tracker properly polar aligned by looking for the polar scope and dialing the polar alignment perfectly. And as you can see, the stars are pretty much pinpoint sharp, you know, maybe at just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But definitely if I compare these two, you can see a massive, massive difference. Again, this is without the precise polar alignment, with only coarse polar alignment. And this one on the right is with the precise polar alignment. So as we have seen with your own eyes on those test images, the shorter the focal length, the less likely it is that the star trace will appear in our images. And the longer the focal length, the more likely it is that the star trace will appear. So generally, if you cannot see the celestial pole and properly polar align your tracker, and you have to resort to only coarsely polar align your tracker, I wouldn't recommend going beyond something around 50 millimeters focal length. If you're doing wide field photography, if you're doing Milky Way photography, then you can totally be fine with just coarsely align your tracker. But if you want to go to deep sky astrophotography and go to focal lengths like 135, 200, 300 or beyond, then definitely the coarse polar alignment will not be good enough. But, you know, like I said, up to 50 millimeters, coarse polar alignment is fine and you can use true north in your phone in order to get it even more precise than I had. So pretty much you are good to go, but make sure that the readings on the compass are actually accurate. So what I would recommend you to do is to have two compasses, one in your phone and one analog, and just cross reference them and double check that they are uh, saying the same thing. If you have the true north switch off in your phone, both are on the magnetic north pole, make sure that they are saying the same thing and then flip the switch to show you the true north in your phone and then use that in order to get as precise as possible with coarse polar alignment. All right, guys, that's basically it for me for this video. If you like this, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate that. And also, like always, leave a comment down below if you have any questions if any part of the video is confusing or anything just hit me up in the comments i pretty much try to answer every single comment i get on youtube and if you're new here definitely check out my channel i already have a bunch of astrophotography related content so you will probably find some interesting stuff in there already and also consider subscribing to my channel because i pretty much post a new video every single week so if you don't want to miss out on future videos definitely hit the subscribe button. And right now, if you haven't seen this already, if you want to see my full video on how to properly polar align and set up the Skywatcher Star Adventure, definitely click on the video right here. And also you can click on the video right here because that will definitely be interesting to you as well. So see you next time, clear skies and bye-bye.